In South Africa's slow rate of new infections, an indication that the national state of disaster measures are impactful or is it more complicated? The country currently has 13 deaths and 1,749 infections, which is lower than the 6,000 cases that were expected. As part of the measures to flatten the curve of new infections, the country has also rolled out a mass screening and testing program. Professor Shabir Madi, who is a vaccinologist at the University of Witwatersrand, now joins us on the line. Good evening, Professor, and Welcome uh, to the full view. First of all, starting off with the introduction to our interview, the question is, is this an indication that um, the measures that have been put in place are actually yielding the results that government had hoped for? So good evening to you. Uh, so the short answer is that it's really difficult to tell exactly what is happening with the circulation of the virus and how many people are infected in South Africa. What has happened since the start of the lockdown is that the number of individuals that have come forward for testing has actually decreased rather than increased. So the fewer people that are coming forward for testing, and consequently it's very difficult to understand whether the sort of uh, slower rate in terms of the day-to-day -day increase in number of cases is because of fewer people being tested rather than because of the circulation of the virus having been mm. sort of dampened. Mm. But with the lockdown itself, what we do expect is that there would be dampening of the circulation of the virus in the community. So the lockdown will have some effect on that. But the problem is that once the lockdown is lifted, unless you've been successful in identifying the infectious cases and isolating them during the period of the lockdown and quarantining the immediate context, we risk a major rebound in terms of the number of cases. Mm. And even just envisaging a, a state of the lockdown being lifted, at which point does a lockdown get to be lifted? Um, would we have known that whether each and every person in the country is not infected with the virus? So it's almost impossible to test every person in the country uh, to see whether they're infected or not. Uh, the strategy which government is pursuing is to do sort of home visits Mm. and then to try to screen for which individuals are symptomatic and meeting the criteria to be tested. And as you know, uh, they try, they're wanting to deploy about 10,000 field workers together with nurses into communities to basically do a sort of a rapid scale-up in terms of testing. Now, the usefulness of that is that it will first tell us the extent of individuals that are, the number of individuals that are infected, but it will also enable us to identify which parts of the country are probably more affected than other areas. Mm -hmm. And that would be useful in terms of deciding where to go next beyond the 21-day period of the lockdown. Mm -hmm. And in terms of the numbers of people who are actually tested, I remember that um, the minister speaking last week said that they were looking at at least around um, 5,000 people per day that they tried to test. Do we have the necessary equipment uh, to actually carry this out? Right, so unfortunately, that's the question that's better directed, directed to the laboratories, and in particular the national out of body to service. But what we can say, it's far to be as far as to be testing to identify the majority of cases in communities. We probably need to be testing roughly about fifty to thirty five thousand individuals each day. Mm. Now in the past five years, South Africa has only tested fifty thousand individuals. So it's a far cry compared to what we need to be targeting with regard to the scale of testing. Mm -hmm. And it's only when we get up to that scale of testing that we would be any the wiser in terms of the true number of individuals that are infected in the country. And that will also, like I said, enable us to strategize how to contain the spread of the virus from those individuals mm -hmm. to other members. Mm -hmm. Is there any understanding at this moment, um, while the country has the highest numbers of infections on the continent, why it is that in comparison, for instance, um, if you look at least at a ratio level to the infection rate in Kenya, um, that South Africa has, even when it comes to the death toll, that the death toll itself also is much slower compared to other countries on the continent? Uh, so I think we need to be careful how we interpret this sort of data. So sure. the reality, as an example in Italy, is that individuals that are mainly tested are people that are arriving at hospitals, very ill. And when you look at the percentage of those people that are admitted to hospitals in terms of the number that you die, it would be much higher compared to when you're screening at a community level and you're including many, many mild cases. So as an example in South Africa, the majority of the cases that have been diagnosed have been mild illness that have not required hospitalization. So in that context, what we call the case fatality risk seems to be lower. But if we were to calculate the case fatality risk specifically for individuals that mm. were already hospitalized, 
So in a year, if we're end of the spectrum, that case fatality risk will be close on to 10%. So it depends on how you interpret the okay. data. Okay. There's also the school of thought uh, that says that countries that use the BCG vaccination against the TB have a lower infection and death rate co of COVID-19. Could there be any truth to this view? Look, I can't dismiss it out of hand, but at the same time, the type of analysis has been done to sort of lend support to that sort of a theory, and it really is a theory, uh, doesn't take into account many other variables, which could be influencing the type of uh, incident and the type of severity of disease we see in different populations. Mm. At this stage, uh, it's really, really very early days. And there are, from what I understand, there are studies underway to see where the BCG vaccination, especially in populations where vaccination was not routinely done during infancy, to see if it might have any benefit in protecting against COVID. Mm -hmm. uh, but right now, there's absolutely no evidence to suggest either way. Yeah. And what about um, the malaria drug that's being currently being used? Okay, so again, unfortunately, this drug has been used largely because of public demand rather than signs showing that it's actually effective. Mm. So again, the studies are currently underway, including studies that are going to be conducted in South Africa to determine whether chloroquine, as an example, is either able to reduce uh, the severe progression of the illness into more severe disease or whether it can actually be used in terms of the treatment of individuals that are hospitalized for COVID illness. Mm -hmm. So... Although there have been recommendations, as an example from France and more recently from the United States, for somewhat liberal use of chloroquine, the evidence as to whether it does actually protect or reduce the severity is not yet there. Okay, thank you so much. That is a Professor Shabir Madi who's joining us on the line. He is a professor of vaccinology from the University.